everyone, and welcome to this hands-on online learning session. I'm Aileen Rizzo with the AIM Center, and I'm here with my colleague Bev, who I'll let wave hello. At the AIM Center, we're committed to working toward a more equitable world through math and science education. And you can find out more about our work by visiting our website at aimcenter.org. So today we would invite you to, along the way to communicate with us, to share your thoughts and share some of your ideas. And so you can use the chat or the Q&A feature. Just remember to change your settings to panelists and attendees so that we can all communicate together. We're here today and we're gonna build a catapult and it's a playful process of making and engaging with this catapult that we'll hope will engage learners of all ages to develop a curiosity around STEM. So Bev is here with us today, gonna to share some bit about this playful making activity. And right now she's gonna share a little bit of how it's connected to STEM learning. All right, there we go. Now I'm unmuted. Um, I was just too excited to start sharing about it. So the catapult's a really fun, playful activity where you get to launch something. And so I have three kids at home and I have watched them really enjoy watching things fly through the air. My son got really into Angry Birds when he was younger and um, my husband even built a catapult for him. So there's something fun about watching that. And so today we're going to be making a catapult. And what, how that connects with STEM is that um, there's a lot of science, technology, engineering, and math that's going on. And um, what we're going to do today is kind of think about three of the practice standards for NGSSS. Um, we're going to be thinking about asking questions and defining problems. So as you're building a catapult, you're going to be wondering things. So pay attention to what that is, because um, there's a lot of different um, places and ways that you can do that. And then, you know, potentially it didn't fly the way that you wanted. So there's a problem. Um, we're going to be planning and carrying out investigations where maybe we want to launch it really high and or maybe we want to launch it really far. Um, but we're going to be doing these investigations. And then obviously, as we do that, we're going to be collecting data. And as we collect the data, we're going to decide whether we want to keep doing it the way we were doing it or make some adjustments. So what's fun about the catapult is there's there's slight tweaks that you can do to really tinker around with it um, really easily. Yes, thank you, um, Bev. And for those of you who are joining us, maybe not in the education realm, NGSS stands for the Next Generation Science Standards. They're the set of standards that um, schools across California are using for science. And we're looking at those practices as a way to engage as scientists. So these, those practices seem like simple things that that maybe uh, are in language that we all can tell like, oh yeah, we've done that before. But those are actually the things that scientists do. So today we are scientists and engineers and we'll be working towards that. So um, Bev, we wanted to talk a little bit more about maybe the STEM that we're seeing and um, some of the goals throughout this activity before we get into the making piece. So do you have some of that to share with us? Yeah, so one thing I want everyone to think about, so STEM, if you're not familiar with that term, stands for science, that's your S, technology, that's your tools, um, engineering, that's your building, and then mathematics, which has many facets, maybe measuring, counting, um, but those are kind of the three main ideas that you may want to be thinking about as you're building with your catapult. Now, I'm not going to say what my opinion is right now. What I want you to do is I want you guys to be thinking about as you're building this catapult, where is the science, the technology, the engineering and mathematics that you're noticing? Because um, it's all over and I think it's going to be really fun. We're going to come back to this um, after we make the catapults and um, in our debrief, talk about what we're noticing. Yeah, definitely. And we were thinking like maybe in the chat, if you can think of some ways maybe that you've seen things being launched. 
So if you want to share some ideas that you have in the in the chat as we're continuing to talk about this activity, where have you seen things being launched just maybe on TV or a movie you've watched or just some experiences you have? Think about the ways that things are launched and it doesn't have to be, you know, when we hear the word launch, we might think of a catapult or a rocket, but there are so many different ways to launch something. So I really want you to be using your brains and really thinking about where are we, where are we seeing some of this happening? So the next thing we're going to go uh, through is just our overview of the catapult. Um, catapult is is um, has some history of how it was designed and invented. Today we're going to be using it as a playful object, and how you play with it might depend on what what you'd like to do with your own imagination and curiosity. But as we're thinking about how it's connected to some of these formal science goals, um, Bev, can you tell us a little bit more about specifically the catapult and how it's connected to that? Sure. So today we're going to make two different kinds of catapults. We're going to make a very simple one that I think you can make whether you're working and playing with a two-year-old or it was fun for me. It was kind of my favorite because it, well, I won't say why because I don't want to ruin any, I don't want any spoilers. Um, so we're going to make one of those. That's why you have a can. Um, but then we're also going to make one that gets a little bit closer to more of a traditional catapult where we're going to use either popsicle sticks or pencils um, in order to build a base and then um, choose what we're gonna do to develop that torsion or that um, force that's gonna launch the launching arm and which will have the object in it. So um, the thing that I want everyone to be thinking about is what are different things that you can tweak? So I wonder if I use masking tape or scotch tape, which one might work better? I wonder if I use pencils or popsicle sticks, if that would make any, any um, difference in the launching of the object. Maybe you want to look at a few different types of objects. So I've got a few today um, that I'm going to use because that's where, to me, what was so fascinating about the catapult is there are just so many things that you can tweak and adjust and learn more about um, related to STEM. And they're pretty simple too. So, I mean, we can be launching a piece of paper, which is pretty light, um, or you can find something a little heavier that you wanna launch and think about, well, which one is gonna go farther and why do I think that? So adjusting those variables, I think is a great theme for today because there's just so many fun ways that you can do it. So that's part of why we want everyone to chat with us um, because we wanna hear all the different variations out there that you guys are trying. So, yes, definitely. We have some um, ideas of things that are being launched. So someone shared um, when uh, golfers on TV hit the golf balls, they launch those golf balls into the air, right? Especially when they're hitting it um, from pretty far away, get just getting started with the new um, game. So that's, that's one way we're seeing launch th things being launched in sports, right? We see that a lot in sports, whether that's a basketball or a football or a baseball, our arm and the force that's coming from our own bodies is helping that ball to be launched in the air. Very good example. Right, and I think that that's one of those things that, you know, when we think about building a catapult, maybe this idea of a medieval catapult is not as engaging right off the bat for kids, but when they start to see where launching is actually happening in the world, I mean, maybe it's looking at the water shooting out when the sprinklers turn on, or maybe there's a, um, a waterfall somewhere or basketball, or maybe it's throwing a football like that. Those are all launching kind of ideas. And, you know, we're going to talk later about watching the art that that object makes and how can we make adjustments to that launching arm so that we can do what we want it to do. Um, so I think it's fun to really find different ways to, to hook someone into a STEM activity. Um, and that's kind of part of what we're all about at the AIM Center because we want STEM to be for everyone. Yes, definitely. 
So we're going to get ready to start making. And I like how um, Bev talked about variables, things that you can change, whether it, that's in your design. But we're going to mention some um, materials right now. You have the list um, before we got started. But there's a lot of places we can substitute, right, Bev? We can substitute in some of these um, materials. So can you tell us a little bit of, about these materials? And we'll all kind of, if you don't have everything you need, maybe you can go grab something else. Um, maybe you thought you couldn't do this because you didn't have popsicle sticks, but we can use pencils instead. So right. think about the way that you can um, adapt and we'll go through um, some of these materials. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna get under this camera. Did my camera move over so you can see my hands down here? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is what we're one of the things that we're going to make the the things that you need to get are something like a pencil or a popsicle stick um, that will allow you to build that base like i showed you right here um, then you're also going to want to get something that's going to kind of develop that force or that torsion so rubber bands work but i also talked about string Maybe you have some old gift wrapping string that you might have laying around or yarn. All of that can work as well. Um, then for our launching arm, we're gonna need some spoons. Um, a scissors might be helpful um, because you may need to cut either your string or a popsicle stick like I did here. Um, and then some cans. Um, that's one of the catapults. That's gonna be the first catapult that we make and then tape, some kind of tape that you have. Um, this is painter's tape or um, duct tape. And then last but not least, what you wanna launch. So I have pennies here, balls, and I even grabbed an old magazine that I'm gonna throw, rip up and um, just to see how the different variances work with the catapults. And like we said before, I mean, there might be ways to substitute that you have thought of or will think of as you're trying to gather your materials. So please share with us in the chat room how you maybe change the design or thought of different things that you can use. So we're going to go ahead and um, go ahead and get started. We're going to also ask you that maybe as you're using your catapult or you're making that to take some pictures and tag us on social media. Let us know that you're here with us making and you're excited to invite others to join us this time or next time. So let's go ahead and get into some making and the steps that we need um, to go through. Like Bev said before, we're gonna make two different kinds of catapults and we're gonna give you a little play time in between. So let's get ready and get started. Okay, so the first catapult we're gonna make is gonna use a can and a spoon and the tape. So, I'm going to try painter's tape. And what you're going to do and what you need to think about is how do you want to tape this spoon on? Do you want it really tall? Do you want it short? Um, now, I mean, I guess if you'd like, you could also try some rubber bands to attach it. I will say I did try that. You might even wrap a, whole, a string around. The key is you want to get that spoon attached to the can. So I'm going to go for a little taller launching arm. So just like that, there's your catapult. Now I asked you to bring more than one can because I want you to think about maybe two different ways that you can adjust your catapult. Maybe you want to use two different kinds of tape. Um, I'm going to adjust the height of the arm. So I'm going to make a shorter arm this next time. And then as I go to my play time, I'm going to see how they compare. Now, one thing that was helpful um, is you might have a little bit of trouble holding the object onto the spoon. So you may have to, oops, there we go. You may have to tilt it a little bit, but another thing that we found is that if you take just a little bit of tape and put it down at the bottom, it creates a little bit of a base that helps hold the object in. You make a little bit, make a little lip in there. So that might be helpful for you. So I think now it's um, play with our catapults. So I'm gonna turn my camera and you guys can start playing if you want.
this is a great catapult, especially for younger kids who um, want to get engaged with making something. And I think it's a great way for them to to quickly make something that they could use and try out really, really quickly. So go ahead, try your catapults, um, watch how they launch, see if the length of your your spoon or your launcher there arm is, is making a difference with how far it goes or how high it goes. And we'll give you just a few minutes to do that. invite you to come back together. I hope that you had some fun playing with this first version of the catapult. When I made ours at home, you can see I didn't have a spoon, so I had to use plastic fork. Still worked well if I put tape. We put tape there for that little lip. And I had a, a bigger can, which actually worked well for um, smaller kids. Having that stability there and setting it on the floor was really great. Also, I would say don't be scared if you break the spoon or your plastic fork. That happens. Just put another one on there or find something else that will work. Um, that, that's going to happen sometimes. And so let's um, be expecting that maybe um, just uh, the four sometimes or reusing it sometimes just makes it crack in the middle or snap off. So just be, just be aware that sometimes little ones get upset um, quickly when something like that happens. But Let's um, be ready to say, hey, we can fix it. Let's make another one. Let's move forward and still play because that's going to happen. We can expect that. So let's get into our second catapult, a little bit more intricate, but um, lots of fun. And Bev's going to lead us through the steps to make that. Awesome. So now we're going to build something more like this, where um, you're going to build your base and you're going to actually create the force with either an elastic um, like a rubber band or some twine or some sort. So today I'm going to actually use um, the popsicle sticks, but you're welcome to use, like I said, pencils or anything else straight that you have. Um, you're going to take the popsicle sticks and you're going to take two and put one under and on top. So you're going to make that right angle. Then you're going to grab a rubber band. And this is what took me a few times before I realized. If you just hook it on one and then kind of grab them like it's a string and start wrapping, you're going to want to wrap both diagonals and then wrap two diagonals again. So it makes like a, a, 
a crisscross. Next, I'll use a, a different rubber band that's a little bit brighter against the wood. The yellow is a little harder to see. Then you're, you're gonna do this on the other side. So again, what I, what I found to be not as obvious as <laughs> maybe someone thought when I was um, looking at the different ways to make these is you kind of hook it on the top there and then you're, you're, you're wrapping it together on the, the diagonals and then you move it over. And I think this might be a little bit tricky for small hands, but then you have this loop at the end that you just hook on to one of the two edges. It really doesn't matter. But if you only do one diagonal with a square, a parallelogram, which would be really interesting too, you know, if, they, if a child, that's how they want to do it. It depends on whether or not the making is really interesting for a kid or um, maybe the launching. So some kids really enjoy that, that making process. So then we're gonna just take again, two more um, popsicle sticks over this side. Now, let's say you're using pencils. One thing I noticed is you can do it with just two, but four often is a little bit better. So I used four on this and um, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take the two on the top and then the two on the bottom, and then follow the same idea as the popsicle stick one, where you hook it over one of the edges, and then again, go into that diagonal wrapping. So you wrap it along one diagonal, then wrap it along the other diagonal, and then just hook it onto the pencil. Then on this side, again, kind of hook it on the edge there. And then it's all about the diagonals. On this side. Now the reason um, when I looked into making catapults that someone recommended um, the pencils is because a pencil is longer than a popsicle stick. So then you can be twirling this popsicle stick around and you don't have to do it at a diagonal or, or cut the popsicle stick. I found that cutting the popsicle stick was not a big deal. Um, so that is why I kind of preferred this um, one. So I'm gonna finish this base up. So again, hook it on the edge and then going through the diagonals. And this is where you could use like yarn or something else to hook those joints, right, Bev? Yes, absolutely. The, the rubber band, it just, it's, it's a way to hold it together so you don't have to tie it at the end, but absolutely, you could use string, um, string or rubber bands, it doesn't matter. So now that you have your base, now what we're thinking about next is we need to create that force that's going to launch it. So this is where you have a choice. You have rubber bands or you can do string. Now, let's say you choose rubber bands. Maybe you choose three rubber bands, but here's another fun counting opportunity, right? Do we want to use three? Do we want to use six? You can wrap it one time. So see how I just did that once and then Put your popsicle stick in there and start twirling it. Now, if you want, you can try to double wrap it. What that's going to do is it's going to make those rubber bands a little tighter. Will that help your catapult? Will it not? I don't know. I'll let you figure that out. So then you're going to take again and you'll start twirling and twirling and twirling. You can count those twirls of your um, popsicle stick. I found that if I put a little dot, it was a little easier to count how many times I was um, twirling it around um, when I was tinkering before this and wanted to kind of see like is 20 or 30, like does it change um, how the object is launched. So again, you keep twirling until you're going to end up, you push it, see how I pushed it so that now it hits the top there, that's just going to hold it in place. So now it's not going to unravel. 
Okay, now if you use the string, what you're gonna just do is you're just gonna tie it. You can tie it just once, like this, or you can wrap it a few times and then tie it. And then again, you slide that, that smaller, I cut these popsicle sticks, but if you use the pencils, you, the popsicle stick is, is a perfect size and you just start twirling it. Now I noticed as I did this um, twine one that it will not let me twirl it as many times. So that is kind of gives that opportunity to talk about the elasticity of material, like the rubber bands are much more elastic than uh, twine, but both of them have that elasticity in it. So then we're gonna get our spoon and we are just going to slide it on and attach it for our arm here. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to which way you wanna have your launching arm facing. So you, you do want it to fling forward. And then you can use a rubber band or again, more twine if you would rather. Um, sometimes I found that it helped if I just wrapped the rubber band around the spoon before, just don't make it too tight. And then it has a little gap there that you can just slide it right on. Now, one thing to think about when, when you're launching is the length of this. So if you wanna hold this all the way down, like this, then you need your launching arm to be able to fly. So if you have this popsicle stick and it's pushed too much, it's gonna hit the table. So you wanna kind of make it as far as possible without it sliding out. And then there's your catapult. And that's what you meant with the, um, the pencils, that the pencils give you more space inside Right, so think about as I put these rubber bands on the pencils and then I use a popsicle stick in here, there's plenty of room to twirl that around. And I was just thinking, I mean, if your goal is to think about some mathematical opportunities in here, then this is a beautiful one to talk about the length of different objects and why that works. And over here, I was kind of tweaking it at a diagonal more. Well, why did I have to do that? So, and that's our catapult. So I think we are ready to start playing. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and remember, use the chat feature if you have any questions about a step that we just went through or like to see something again, please let us know. So we're gonna take a few minutes to use our catapults. And as you use your catapult, notice how far your object flies. Maybe notice how high it flies. Um, you may notice sometimes you want to tinker with your design and be creative and maybe a problem you're noticing and how you would fix it. We love to see any of your photos online or social media. Please share with us and take us so we can follow along. So we're going to take just about five minutes and we'll see you soon.
All right. So I know everyone's having fun playing and probably still experimenting with your catapults, but we wanted to just have some time where we could reflect on maybe design. So if you have any questions, I know some people ask questions about adding the spoon on. Any other things that you're wondering about or curious about in this making process, please share with us. But we just wanted to come back and um, talk a little bit about reflecting on this activity, some guide for maybe teachers and parents who are going to do this with their children or who are doing it now. What are some ways that we can think about um, the catapult? Like, how did your catapult work? Um, maybe we can talk more about suggestions for interacting with kids about around their catapult and the things that they're doing in the STEM field. So Bev, can you share a little bit with us? I know you had a lot of experience with doing it with children and engaging this yourself as a learner. Yeah, so children are very interesting. Like I had mentioned earlier, I have three of my own and I've interacted with a lot of kids and, and what motivates them or engages them can really vary. Maybe it's the actual making process. So being able to spend a little more time on that um, you might even decorate it, you know, because that's exciting. Um, whatever, I think whatever, you know, is that hook for them, um, is something that you'll just want to pay attention to. But I do have a video of, um, my daughter, Lily, um, who was playing with the catapult. And so it was really fascinating to me because, we have to remember that what engages kids is not necessarily what we're most um, and so just allowing her to tinker and I, I mean I kind of I didn't give her any guidance at all and one thing that I, you know is interesting is this catapult doesn't look like that traditional one where you have the the launching or the arms that kind of stop it and so she had to kind of tinker around and figure out how to um, hold it so that it met the goal that she had. Um, again, that's the, the great thing about catapults. Maybe you wanna launch it really high. Maybe you wanna launch it really far. And you saw me playing today. I was trying to launch it into a bowl, which is a little trickier than you would think. I think I must have launched 20 things and I got two in, but it was very satisfying when I finally did. So why don't we watch um, this video of Lily um, playing with a catapult and I did it in slow motion because one of the things that I found was really fascinating for even for kids to watch is what does that arc look like that that travel path of the object which is kind of it happens so fast in real life it's hard to notice but my kids love making videos and I think a lot of other kids might as well. And so this is a great way for us to hook kids into um, making catapults. So why don't we watch that video right now? Go. So you can see at first it did not go exactly where she thought it was supposed to go. So when you see how she's holding that catapult, we're going to watch three other instances of her doing it and we'll see how it changes. So maybe you notice the couch or the window or the table to the right of the ball. How, how does that help you tell where that ball's going? So I'm on the newer side of making videos. Um, so that was one of my first attempts. Um, but what I was so drawn into was all those, the different art 
arcs that the ball would travel based on how she was manipulating and holding the catapult, you know, and how it moved from, you know, standing straight up to her holding it between her knees. I mean, that's one of those ideas of that force. We want all that potential force um, or as much as we can, if the goal is to make it go farther, which that's what she was looking to do. Yeah, I love this video because we know that um, STEM education especially needs that reflection piece. So it isn't so much always do the activity and then you'll learn something from it. But the conversations that we have with our children or the reflection we have around the activity that they just engaged in are, can be so powerful for their learning. And videos like what you just show, kids love to watch their videos. They want to say, you know, let me see, right? So right. letting them see the video and then talk about what they notice in the video is one way to have those conversations. So that's really great. Right. I can imagine saying things like, was, did the ball go, was the ball higher than the couch or lower than the couch? Um, where was the ball in relationship maybe to um, the, there was a knob on the door that I, I mean, I've obviously watched this video quite a few and for everyone else, you got one shot at it, but there were even little knobs on the door, but, but maybe they pick an object. Maybe you freeze the video and say, okay, I want you to look at something in the room and we're going to see if the ball travels above or below. All that spatial reasoning language is really, really valuable to STEM and finding playful ways to engage in that, um, I think are gold, right? So if you can get a kid hooked into that, um, maybe make that prediction, is it going to go higher or lower or maybe farther than this? Um, I think that can be really powerful for kids. Um, even if you had, a, you were a teacher and you were showing some different launch videos and asking them to make a pr prediction before you played the video, I think that even is a fun thing that kids could do. Yeah, definitely. I did. I have three daughters and I, we did this activity and they um, actually try to make a game. So much like, you know, you go to these fall festivals, which we're all not in, not entirely engaging in right now because of of the pandemic. But they actually made one with the catapult and, you know, got some cardboards like this, you know, your containers and put like 100 points or 50 points on it. And what another thing was fascinating is one of my daughters got the um, paper towel roll. And if you hit it with the projectile, then you got some point. So it wasn't necessarily all about target inside, but also about, you know, hitting a target. And I think that that's ways that children start um, imagining different things about what they can do with their catapult and what their goals will be if it is to get it farther or if it is to get it um, more accurate. So those are different ways that we can engage. And, and I've noticed that even after making it and playing with it, that the next day or a few days later, children like to come back to that and imagine either something new or try something new with their catapult. And that is one of the things that's powerful about STEM and, and about the making process. And that's what I love about tinkering is it it's it's this playful. I want to tweak this. I want to adjust this. Maybe I can make it go farther. And I love when kids create their own games for things and out of very simple things that are in the house. I mean, we're all in our homes right now as we speak, even doing this webinar. So how do we continue to make that same place that we've been seeing so much of and, and kind of feel fresh and new and making up a game and then being able to play with that? Um, I saw online as I was doing a little bit of exploring around catapults, people recommending using marshmallows. Um, and you could be launching it into their mouth if you're a little less excited about um, the sugar, you could try grapes. Um, I, I knew someone that would love to throw the grapes up in the air and try to catch them in their mouth and they were actually really good at it, but why not use a catapult? So, I mean, there can be lots of fun, playful ways that we can um, integrate that um, with kids and then not miss those beautiful moments to, to be able to connect the science that's happening. So, that's just, that's just some of those fun things. And, and what I notice, at least with my kids, is that they don't always make the connections to the science concepts um, because they don't really, they, they often don't realize it's the same thing as what they're talking about in school. 
because it feels so different. It's that same battle we've had in education where real world versus, you know, school math or STEM or science. And how do we keep building that bridge? We talk about it right in the world as we're making it and having fun. Definitely. So Bev, I, I know that um, people might have some questions a little bit later, but I wanted to go through some of those first slides. Like let's review some of those practices or some of the STEM. We talked about that we would see those things. And I wondered if anybody noticed themselves seeing some of the science, technology, engineering that they were participating in. Yeah, so if people want to put in the chat, um, maybe some science or technology or engineering and math ideas, that would be great. And we can kind of see how you guys see that playing out. I know for um, mathematics, we talked a lot about measuring. And even if you're not getting out a ruler or a tape measure, how you can use um, things around your house to see how, thing, how far something is, how high it went, and ways that we can compare with those objects that are in our own environment. Right, and that was one of the things that I um, was trying to draw attention to in the video is this idea that we can measure just higher, lower, farther, you know, when you, when you focus on an object in the room and you compare that to the object that was um, launched. Yeah. So, so it looks like yeah, someone some mentioned um, the engineering in making it um, and how they adjusted their catapult to make it go farther or higher. So thanks for that. Definitely, because engineers are all about solving problems or um, changing the design to reach a different goal. Definitely. And when I first started thinking about STEM, I didn't really see myself as an engineer. Like when I thought of an engineer, I kind of thought of someone that does that for a living. Um, but the power in STEM is realizing that engineering happens every time you make something. I mean, I go in the kitchen and I cook every night for dinner. There's some engineering that's happening as we're making different recipes and or, you know, there's lots of things that I think we do in our everyday life that it connects with that engineering idea. And that's how we can kind of open up topic of STEM for so many people as they realize it's not just that title engineer. That is definitely one of them, but not the only one. Yeah. We have some more. Um, science making hypothesis of, of which catapult will launch objects farther, further, or higher. So yeah, we did some different kinds of catapults. How do they compare with each other? That would be Yeah. Great. I don't, one thing I realized is, so I had built two catapults, one with the rubber band and then one with a string. And my rubber band one just did not have enough force to really launch it very far. So I moved to my string and it, it worked, it went a lot farther. Um, and then I had to start adjusting kind of like the height and the angle that I wanted to launch in order to get it into that bowl. Um, but that idea of like, okay, this is where I think it might go, you know, what's going to do that? Or even like I said, if you use two different materials and you ask the question, which one's going to work better or worse and why do we think that? Yeah. And predictions and hypothesis are so powerful because the aha moments happen when something happens that we didn't expect. I think that those are the powerful learning moments where we're like, whoa, I didn't expect that to happen. Like I thought this material would work so much better than this other material and it didn't, it didn't go the way I expected. So helping kids see that making a hypothesis on a prediction isn't about seeing if you're right at the end, because when you're wrong, that's when you learn the most. And that's, that's really powerful. Right. So someone made a comment about the idea that when these catapults were originally made, they had rope, they didn't have rubber bands. And, you know, what a great connection. I mean, they're launching catapults, you know, in as weapons of war, and those ro ropes work fantastic. The thing that I would ask students is why? Because that was surprising to me. I thought rubber bands, they're super elastic. They're, they're, they have a lot of elasticity. I can launch them. You know, I've, I have shot a few rubber bands in my life and they go pretty far. And so I kind of thought they would go really well with a catapult, but it wasn't until I doubled up, you know, the rubber band, which created a little more tension. 
it wasn't so elastic that it started to actually give me the results that I was looking for, which is, you know, to give it a little more distance. So um, I think that's a great surprising result for kids for them to really think about it. When I heard the word elasticity, I would not have guessed rope has any elasticity. Um, but I remember someone talking about running and how running on asphalt was easier on their knees than cement. Well, why is that? There's a little more give on the asphalt than the cement. So um, those are those kinds of connections that once you have those questions and think about them, you can't kind of stop. Yes, definitely. So we definitely want you to um, encourage your little ones, your children, your students. And this is an activity that expands all ages, really. Um, students in grad school are making catapults and pre pre K's are making catapults. So this is a, a device or a tool that really is very powerful. But um, the idea of curiosity needs to really come out. And that happens when we're curious about things and we try them and see see what happens. What do you think might happen? Try it out and see what happens. And those very simple, I think, um, embodied ways that we come to learning can be really powerful overall in your learning experience. So we really want to thank you for participating today and for sharing um, some of what we've learned today. And we, we went over any last thoughts, Bev, around this activity or any last recommendations? Well, I want to highlight on when everyone was playing, you may have been completely distracted by your own play, which is fantastic. But um, we kind of we kind of categorized some questions to think about in three areas. One was notice, the, the second one was wonder, and the third one was curiosity. And we kind of did that on, on purpose because noticing is something that is just super open. You know, it really allows a lot of entry. So you know, maybe the child notices that the, the spoon hit the table really loud. You know, who knows, maybe they'll start exploring sounds. Um, but, but allowing that super open way of just asking them what worked, why, what did you notice? It just kind of allows them to kind of still be at that center of that play experience, which kind of connects to what you talked about with letting kids really learn through the play and through that exploring. And then the wondering is, is that idea of like, well, I wonder what else I kind of can't help but wonder now as you know, I've been making and the more you play, the more I think you wonder um, about it, but, but asking those and even just making statements. I mean, I have had so much fun as I have been doing some of these playful experiences around kids and just, I'll just sit there, be playing next to them. And I'll say something like, I wonder what would happen if, and all, next thing you know, they're doing exactly what I just wondered about. Um, because that's just part of, again, making it that playful, engaging. And, and so if kids maybe don't know what to do next or whatever, just wondering out loud is that great tool that helps kind of build that curiosity. And then curiosity was really designed to kind of say, now I'm going to take some wonderings. And, um, and kind of explore a curiosity that I have. Maybe it's using a new tool. So maybe I wanna to try to build a catapult with a different tool. Um, maybe it's, I wanna explore the length of the arm. So when we were building it with these cans, right? I, I had done it with different lengths. Well, I also tried at another time, adding a popsicle stick to my launching arm to make it even taller. I mean, you could add a few popsicle sticks. Maybe kids going to say, I want to add four popsicle sticks to see what happens. What's fascinating to me is I think there's an assumption often with kids, which I kind of have myself at times, like even bigger is better, but there's actually some sweet spots where you don't want it too tall or too short. Um, Cause there's, like I said, with catapults, lots of fun things that are happening um, as you play. So, and a lot of things, working together, right? You've got your base, you have what's creating that, that potential force. And then you also have the launching arm that all of which you can adjust and change and, um, and have fun with. Um, so just being able to think about those are just words that I keep in the back of my mind, notice, wonder, curiosity, to kind of keep it from moving too much, like be too directed by the adult and really allow the child or myself 
if I'm playing, um, to be at that center of that playful experience and pay attention to um, what they want to and what they're curious about, so. Very, very important. Thank you, Bev. And thank you for bringing this great activity to us um, this month. AIMS Hands Online is all about bringing um, a, a, a collaborative community together around STEM and doing it with very normal, everyday use kind of objects that you might find in your home and really adapting those to the ways that we can do STEM together. And in this time where we're not going out as much or not going to school, we can still do a lot of learning together at home that looks a lot different, that is playful, that is fun, that is engaging. And so you'll find a one pager document at our website, aimcenter.org. We'll have a summary of the materials, the questions, the background around this um, activity, and the last two that we already have engaged with. So resources here for you to share with others and to um, go back and remind yourself about what we did and maybe um, engage with others at another time. So make sure that you visit our website and look at that. And we wanna announce our upcoming Hands Online next uh, month will be Paper Rocket Play. So we'll be using some paper to make some rockets and engaging in what kind of science, technology, engineering, and math is around this kind of activity. So thank you once again for joining us. Um, please go to our website and visit us about any other resources you like. And please tag us if you have any pictures that you'd like to share online. Um, we'd love to see them and um, know how we can continue to support you. So once again, thank you from the AIM Center and have a good rest of your day.